Hey guys, it's Steve Pedersen here with Rockstar Website Design with a quick review of WordPress 5.0. What we're going to talk about today are three simple things. I want to talk about the new Gutenberg editor, also known as the Block Editor. I want to talk about the new 2019 theme. And then lastly, just talk about a few suggestions you might want to consider before updating. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. I have installed WordPress 5.0 on my local machine as a fresh install, so there's no other uh, pages or plugs, plugins, or anything like that. It's brand new, fresh install on my own personal computer. And like I said, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the Gutenberg editor because the Gutenberg editor is all the rage. It's what this whole it's a, it's a major step forward for WordPress in the development uh, of your website. So it uh, garners some attention. Um, okay, so it is the new kid on the block. It's very similar. If you've ever uh, posted anything on uh, maybe LinkedIn or, or like a, uh, not a post, but like created a, a, an article on LinkedIn or have ever used medium.com, it's kind of like that. The new Gu Gutenberg editor is going to give you that same kind of environment for creating both pages and posts. Um, I'm not going to do a full demonstration of the Gutenberg editor. There's plenty of tutorials out there. I might even do uh, that separately. I just wanted to introduce you to it and give you some important information about it that's going to you, you might find helpful. Um, I've tried the Gutenberg editor while it was in beta, and uh, I can tell you for sure that the the latest version that came out with WordPress 5.0 is by far much better than the version that was in beta. So you don't have to worry about that. It's a really great uh, way to um, create both pages and posts. Uh, what I will say though is that you're not stuck with it. When you first um, install or update uh, to WordPress 5.0, if you don't already have it, uh, there is, I'm going to show you the installed plugins. I've, I have installed a couple of plugins, uh, a couple of editors, uh, but it comes automatically with the classic editor, and that's just the classic editing environment. Um, and if you want to use that, you can use that. You can actually go back and forth very easily between the classic editor and the Gutenberg editor. So that's a wonderful little feature they have. Now, uh, you can actually set up either one of those editors, either the classic editor or the Gutenberg editor, also known as the block editor, uh, by default. So what you would do is you'd go over to settings and writing and in that setting area you've got the default editor for all users. You can either select the classic editor or the block editor and then you can even allow, if you have other editors that are involved on your site, you can even allow uh, for them to switch back and forth or not. You can uh, give that uh, ability to them. Okay, so that is the first place that you want to uh, you know check, uh, check into uh, if you feel Whatever one you want to use by default, you can set it there. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, editor, the Gutenberg editor and classic editor, as I mentioned, will work on both the uh, pages and the posts. It's going to be the same thing uh, for there. What, what's going to be interesting is that whatever editor you used, so for example, I also installed the Elementor um, page creator as as well as the page builder by site origin uh, and whatever page or editor you are currently using on that page it's going to say it next to um, your page name or uh, post title so for example I created one called the Elementor page and as you can see I'm using the Elementor editor um, same with my home page, but then this uh, default page, which uh, WordPress gives you, which I think is a great idea, it's a privacy policy page that was created with the classic editor, and you can either continue to edit with the classic editor or with the block editor. Uh, this sample page, um, I was going in and editing that, so that is being edited with the block editor, and I can go in and edit that with uh, block editor or classic editor. Now I have not uh, used the Elementor editor for any of those so that's why that option is not showing up right there but as you can see with this uh, Elementor page that option to edit with Elementor 
is also available. Now, I will also say this. If you are currently editing a page with Elementor or Page Builder by Site Origin, and you go in to edit with the block editor or classic editor, you're going to lose all of those. Well, you won't necessarily lose them because you can go back to that editor. But um, I guess the point is don't go back and forth between those editors. You can go back and forth between block editor and classic editor, but not any of the other editors. Okay, so there you have that one. Okay, what else? Um, let's go in and take a look at one of these pages. So let's just take the sample page, for example, and we'll open that up and we'll see within the editor, you can actually um, come down here. There's an editor section. And if you want to write in the editor, you can actually switch to either the classic editor or back and forth between that and the block editor. That's a nice little feature. So whatever you're not, I guess the main point is you're not stuck with one or the other. You can go back and forth and try them both as long as you have uh, the uh, classic editor plugin installed. It should be installed by default. Just want to double check and make sure that that is in there. And of course, what I have already mentioned is that, uh, which was a concern of mine with this new editor, um, am I going to be able to use my own page editor like Elementor or Page Builder by Site Origin or one of the many other plugins? And of course, it works uh, fine. It works just as well uh, with all of the other new stuff that they got going on. Okay, so now with the other new stuff that they go on, got going on, let's go on to the next thing, which is the uh, the new 2019 theme. Let's take a look just first of all at what this website looks like. Um, okay, so I've come up with just a few links here. Uh, well, let's just do a quick overview. This is what uh, <laughs> this is what the home page looks like with the default Hello World uh, post in there. Um, as you can see, um, uh, I, I kind of hesitate because I know that the, the people at WordPress are doing a fantastic, fantastic job at developing this free platform, which half the world is using. So kudos to them. And I'm sure they have a reason for doing things the way that they do. Um, my personal opinion is I would not use this theme uh, because it just, it just, I don't know, it doesn't look appealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> but here it is. Uh, so as far as the logo, you can put your own logo in there, but they make you crop it into a square. So you can't put just any logo in there. Uh, and as you can see, it kind of puts it off to, off to the side. So you're gonna, it's very text heavy. And just as a reminder, WordPress began with and always will be a blogging platform. So that's kind of the idea. This is not, you know, obviously you can use all kinds of different plugins to make it a professional website, but at its core, it is a blogging platform, which is why the 2019 theme looks and works and feels like it does. Uh, so you've got your site title, your um, tagline, and then your links, your navigation links will show up uh, right underneath there. Um, you've got this, uh, <laughs> little line and then the title of each page and then this what's really interesting with this theme I mean this is it's like a really really bare bones theme you've got your your header your navigation your content and then a footer there's no sidebar and what's interesting is that it looks like there should be space for a sidebar you can see like everything is sort of kind of left justified with this page. And then there's all this blank space and you think, oh, I'm gonna put a sidebar in there. Well, they don't have that. <laughs> so it's just your your uh, header, your content and your footer. Uh, so there you have it. Like I said, really, really, really bare bones, very large font. And as far as customization, let's go in and just take a look at how you can customize this theme. There's not a lot of, um, uh, options to customize. You got your site identity, which, um, like I said, you can upload a logo, but it, they'll force you to crop it into a square. Um, you've got you know, menus, real simple, basic stuff. Uh, widgets, um, you can add widgets, but as you can see, it's just the footer. There's no sidebar widgets. 
Um, you've got your home page settings, which is, <laughs> you know, if you're expecting much, you're not going to get much. Uh, it's just, you know, you're, you're determining whether you're going to set a static page as your home page or um, your latest posts as your home page. So now what's interesting with this uh, page, I will show you uh, this image uh, that I'm using is taking up half the page. And the only reason it's doing that is because I'm using the Elementor theme to do that. Um, I'll show you something here in just a second about the templates, okay? Uh, so, and then of course, additional CSS as always with um, uh, all of their themes. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is that, um, let's go into uh, our pages here, all pages and we'll do a quick edit and you could see uh, right now uh, because I'm using the Elementor theme I have a couple of different templates to choose from I've got Elementor full width Elementor canvas and default template however uh, these other pages for example uh, the privacy policy which was currently being edited by the classic editor if I do a quick edit there um, Oh, okay. I guess it does show up, right, because I do have that option uh, with Elementor. However, if uh, if I have Elementor deactivated, then there are no templates. There's only the default template available um, if you're using just the theme. So, like I said, very, very minimal, very bare bones uh, for the new 2019 theme. Um, so... There you have that. So lastly, let's check in with a few of my suggestions for uh, updating to the new WordPress 5.0. Okay, so lastly, what I wanted to say is just, I wanna give you a few suggestions before updating, but I wanted to say as far as the rest of WordPress goes, it's pretty much the same. There's, uh, I mean, the whole thing was basically created uh, for this whole Gutenberg update. So the rest of WordPress pretty much functions exactly as you would expect WordPress to function. All right, let's take a look at some suggestions. First of all, uh, since it is the holiday season and it's a very crazy busy time of year, you may want to wait uh, to update to WordPress until uh, they actually do the next you know, like 5.1 or 5.0.1, whatever they'll, uh, I know there's plans in the works for an update already to the current version of WordPress. So you may wanna just wait until after the new year until they update WordPress again. Uh, if you do wanna do your update, make sure absolutely certain that you back up your site before you do any kind of updates, okay? I personally use a plugin called Updraft Plus uh, back up and restore so you can try that there's a myriad of plugins out there that will help you uh, back up your website uh, you want to if if you have like premium themes or premium plugins you'll want to check with your uh, theme and plugin developers to make sure that they're that you know you the themes and plugins that you're using are going to be compatible with the latest version of WordPress, which is WordPress 5.0. Then if you can, which I have done, test the update in a development environment. Now, if you have absolutely no clue what this is and you've got somebody, you know, doing web, you know, your WordPress website for you, ask them to check it out in a development development environment. Now, that if you have a huge website with tons of plugins and tons of content and all this stuff, that's going to be very difficult <laughs> to just go, you know, like, well, let's set up a brand new website in a development environment. I understand that. Um, I'm just saying if you can uh, set up the whole update in a test environment first. Uh, after your uh, update, you want to check your site for uh, any kind of plugins. Make sure that everything is working. Make sure you don't have any uh, code that, you know, for example, like a short code that's Kind of sticking out or, or something that's not working just kind of thoroughly comb through your entire site to make sure that everything is working well there you have it folks thanks for joining me for this wordpress 5.0 review again i'm steve Pedersen. 
with Rockstar website design. Uh, if you like the video, I would uh, just, I'd really appreciate it if you like it or share it or subscribe to my channel. I've got all kinds of great content here for you. And uh, if you have any uh, feedback, would love to hear your comments. If you have anything that you'd like me to review or go into further detail on, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day and enjoy the new version of WordPress. Take care.